Hello, I am Parker Doran, and today I'll be discussing if it is possible to reduce the negative impact of funeral costs for low-income families. When a person passes away, the last thing their family should have to think about is how are we going to afford the funeral? Unfortunately, for many low-income families, this mindset is prevalent due to the extreme costs that arise in the funeral process. In 2007, U.S. consumers spent $15 billion on death care, the industry relating to funerals, cremations, and other services, with the average funeral cost being around $8,000, and some services bringing the cost above $12,000. The cheapest death care option, cremation, is still a significant expense, costing on average of $3,000, which totals around 5% of the median household income. Daniel Kahneman and Angus Deaton's research on the relationships between income and the well-being for the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States found that for low-income families, an expense of $5,000 would have much more detrimental effects to their emotional well-being than a higher-income family, due to the loss being a greater percentage of their income. In a 2012 study done by the Funeral and Memorial Information Council, an organization committed to improving the, industri the funeral industry, the majority of consumers stated these costs were a burden and they hindered being able to peacefully grieve over their lost loved ones. This provokes the question, is there a way to reduce the negative emotional impact of funeral costs in the United States? Unfortunately, Jerry Alec of George Washington University explains that bringing about change to the funeral industry from a legal standpoint is very difficult due to its bureaucratic nature. Because of this limitation, the most effective ways to protect family from a financial crisis is instead to make them aware of the immense costs of death care when they're young, so they can prepare for when death unfortunately does arrive, and increasing the role of social workers in the final stages of people's lives so that they can help the family choose the right death care for their financial situation and not suffer the negative emotional impacts of a high unexpected cost. To understand the current plight of the funeral industry, it's important to know how the industry became what it is today. The modern funeral first came about in the economic upswing in the 1920s, with many Americans wanting to flaunt their wealth and status with a public exhibition, even after life. Before institutions such as the local church or extended family collectively funded the process, yet as the self-centered funeral began to rise, so did paying for it through funds more closely held to the deceased. As technology naturally progressed, the funeral process became much more advanced, and as a result, more expensive. These trends over the last century have led up to an industry where death can financially cripple a family for years to come. One of the reasons death care can be such a financial burden for low-income families is because the costs are often not discussed beforehand. In a study done by researchers from the University of Kansas, it was found that nearly half of people who were involved in the funeral arrangement process for the family had no idea at all about the cost of funerals. Mercedes Bernklug, the main author of the study, explains that when people who, are, who have to make decisions about the funerals are often shown the cost, they are often already overwhelmed with grief and it greatly inhibits their ability to make a wise financial decision. When a lower income family now has a higher than expected charge to their burdens, it significantly decreases their happiness, which is confirmed through the insights from Kahneman and Dean's study. In an effort to avoid manipulation from funeral providers, Congress passed the funeral rule, which is designed to streamline the funeral arrangement process and allow for extensive customization to reduce costs. But studies show that there is a significant portion of funeral providers who dodge regulations and camouflage hidden charges. Along with this, a large majority of the public is not aware of the rights bestowed on them through the funeral rule, and in a time of deep sorrow, many are not too eager to search for them either. For many Americans, funeral costs can significantly add to the emotional burdens that are already present with the loss of a family member. For a family that is already struggling with her finances, even a funeral service costing as low as $5,000 would cause considerable stress and anguish on top of the emotional pain from the loss of a loved one. Along with poor mental health, financial struggles have been linked to poor physical health, as seen in the study by Matthew Casse and Hendrik Schmitz from the University of Duisburg, Essen. When someone going through a period of difficulties regarding their mental and physical health, their capacity to earn money is lessened, and this lack of income causes more damage to their health, creating a cycle of adversity. 
Although the high cost of funerals and issues that they cause cannot be solved outright due to the bureaucratic hurdles in place, there are some measures that can be taken which would reduce some of the negative impacts that the high costs create. For many low-income families, a social worker is provided in the stages, final stages of life for a dying person, but they are rarely perform, proficient in the financial aspects of the process. Bert Klug, Ecker, and Wilkinson suggest that having these social workers be fluent in the economics of funerals will make an important difference in making the endeavor more fluid and less emotionally taxing. The presence of these social workers would also allow for lower income families to manage the budget more efficiently and abate many of the harmful effects that occur to happiness. Along with this, the social workers can help the family avoid any manipulation from funeral providers. Professors Stephen Coppin and Larry Kemp believe that there should be more of a focus on educating consumers about funeral costs and the rights that they are guaranteed before death occurs, so as to properly prepare for it. A dedicated class in college or high school, or perhaps a public notice or announcement detailing the complications of the funeral process would allow for greater awareness. Jesse Fan and Kathleen Zick of the University of Utah believe that familial discussions about funeral arrangements long before death are also a useful a useful method in tackling the costs and avoiding potential manipulation for funeral directors. Another potential solution that has been that suggested by experts is the usage of a fund or insurance that families would invest in when they are younger, so that the funds will gain interest and it can be used to pay for funerals at the time of death. However, many low-income families do not have the disposable income that can be allotted to the savings, so this method of reducing the negative impact of funeral costs is not very plausible. The high cost of funerals have detrimental effects on the mental well-being of families who are already in grief, as they are often too overwhelmed to make wise financial decisions. These costs disproportionately harm low-income families, who take greater damage to their health when they encounter financial hardships and unforeseen costs than people who have more funds readily available. Unfortunately, the current financial industry is brimming with bureaucratic and legislative hurdles, and bringing about meaningful change politically would take an immense effort. Therefore, if there is to be a reduction of the negative emotional impact that these high costs of funerals have on low-income families, there must be an increased awareness of the cost earlier in people's lives, as well as a social worker that manages the finances for the families so that wise decisions can be made and economic loss can be mitigated, along with the damages to health that are caused by the sudden costs. Thank you.